Perfect. Brett Allen here chatting with two comedy masterminds. I'm so excited. Jesse David Fox and Eddie Schmidt about this new streaming series on Peacock, the good one, based on a podcast that Jesse has where weekly you bring a comic on, you work down a bit and talk about the premise and the idea. But now you have a series that's based on this where you follow Mike Birbiglia, one of our favorite comedians, along watching him put together work and how it all processes. I think this is one of the most fascinating things about comedy. We've interviewed dozens upon dozens of comedians all across the spectrum, and it is truly an art form uh, for sure. Both of you, thank you for your time. It's great to meet you. Oh, thank you for having us. Yeah, great to be here. Yes. Well, first of all, how did you pick Mike? I mean, he's obviously very fascinating, very smart, one of the most interesting comedians because his style of comedy is different, I think, than most, where it's storytelling, but also you have the patter and the economy of words of of joke telling. Uh, Jesse, we'll start with you and then we'll move over to Eddie. Sure. I mean, there's a few things. Like I, I, I have somewhat of existing journalist relationship with Mike in that um, I profiled him a few years ago. I've had him on the podcast and I think Mike and I have a lot of similar ideas about how comedy about comedy and an interest in process. And I've always knew him to be a person that would have, that has a very thorough process that might be interesting to explore. I think part of the, the sort of larger reason was the story um, specifically Mike was telling me that, you know, he has these 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 two gigs booked near each other. Um, one being in Rhode Island uh, at a theater that he normally plays at. It's a sort of like smaller theater in the balcony of that theater, and that that's where he goes when he's starting the process of creating a new show. And I think when when I spoke to Eddie about it, we thought like there there could be a story there that would be worth telling that is unique that is not like something that's been told before um so so a lot of it really kind of started there at least from my perspective yes and it's also important to mention that you work for vulture where you have a column your senior editor there and critic ish i would say no i don't know if critic is the right word but you <laughs> review comedy albums and you but you do set the tone i think for the industry of what people can expect and you know oh, i see to say that's very true. Yeah. <laughs> you're funny. You're like, I don't know. Some people might not say the same thing, but I joke. It's you're very smart at what you do. Uh, now, Eddie, you get involved with this project uh, in helping get it going and producing. When you're telling a story like this, it's very broad because the process of comedy, especially this part of it, is almost like secretive in a way, because when I go see a comedian, I see them for 45 minutes to an hour. It's funny. We're laughing. We're joking. But the years or year or two years that go into putting this material together that's polished and fine, we don't see that. Unless you know a lot about comedy and you go to a club and you know that that person is there working out material and you might think, well, this is mismatched, this joke and this story. It's not cohesive and, and linear per se, but it all is part of the magic, I would say, how the sausage is made for sure. Eddie, what interested you in getting involved with Jesse and helping tell this very interesting and fun story about how a comedian puts together their work? Well, I've always loved comedy and I was a big fan of Jesse's podcast because I thought what he was doing was really thorough and rigorous and smart and funny and it had an arc to it. And so in the same way as you describe when you go you go to, go to a restaurant, you get a finished dish, you don't get to see the chef in the kitchen. You go to a museum, you get to see a painting, you don't get to see the artist and the brush strokes. And so I think I felt here, oh, it, it would be really exciting to and we get a whole huge appreciation for the craft of comedy, if we could really see the process, because like, you know, all great art forms, it is personal, it comes from a personal place. And I think, again, going back to why Mike was so perfect for this, is that his materials personal and the sort of the, the, the dates that were on his calendar related to things in his life, where he grew up, where he went to college and started performing. So it, it just naturally lent itself 
to an arc that would be at the intersection of, of process and personal and be visual and funny. Yes. Well, it's such a fascinating thing to watch because, again, having seen Mike or other comedians perform both, you know, the traditional trajectory is like clubs and then small theaters uh, and then bigger theaters or depending on who the comedian is, maybe arenas. Um, but even some of these quote unquote arena comedians will go to the clubs and quote unquote work out because you have to start somewhere, right? Like unless you're one that just goes up, throws spaghetti against the wall and see what's going to stick. Uh, and that's okay too. I think that's what makes this whole art form so fascinating. Jesse, I want to ask you in particular, as you're working through this documentary uh, and following Mike around, does he come to you and ask you for input on like joke material or what do you think? <laughs> that's I know that's a little bit of a faux pas for some comedians. You don't normally sure. just sit around and, you know, talk shop in that way. Mostly it's like, whatever, but I'm just interested to know because of your personal relationship. Sure. Yeah. Um, I will say fun fact, Cat Williams is the only comedian who works out at stadiums. He yeah, will, I know. I wasn't going to say his name, but you said it. That was who exactly I had in mind. <laughs> Every, um, no one else does that. Everyone else does. No, start I don't Anyways. know. Yeah. I mean, that's just crazy. And he's, I mean, it's fair. He's been quoted in media and press saying that he yeah, feels he like going to, to clubs are a waste of time, but that's a whole nother conversation. Anyway, sorry. Anyway. So in terms of working out things with me, so I, I'll, I'll answer two ways. One, Mike is unique in that um, he has a large sort of group of people that he does work his material out. And, you know, as depicted in the special, like he has, you know, his brother is part of the writing process. He has other comedians that are part of the writing process. He has writers that are sort of, and he does work things out. He talks things out. Um, he does, he'll uh, call people on the phone and talk things out. He, I am not a person. He calls on the phone and goes, what do you think about one? I think there'd be, um, it's uh, journalistically morally complicated to do a thing. Like a that. conflict of interest, <laughs> maybe conflict of interest, that sort of thing. I think um, generally if I have any involvement in sort of any comedian's process is that um, I communicate what I like if I'm talking to them and they do something that I like. And it's possible a comedian go, if they care about my opinion, would be influenced by that. Um, and so it's, you know, we spent the time with Mike. I don't know if Mike goes, oh, Jesse seemed to really like this bit. I should do that again. It's never worked before. I've never felt like I saw a comedian do more of a certain type of material because I was there. But it'd be very flattering if they did. Yeah, I would imagine so. Um, Eddie, for you, like being a fan of comedy and getting involved in this special, like, you know, for you, what is it about comedy that you like? Is it the process? Is it the finished project? Uh, what part of the process do you enjoy the most? Well, I just, I grew up, loving comedy and comedians and funny movies and funny things. And, um, and I long ago have a performing background. So I've always appreciated the the product and the process, knowing what it takes and knowing, you know, how hard comedians work. So I think what was look, process of any kind of sort of documentary catnip, right. I, I, I made a music documentary to see James Taylor, play guitar you know five feet away from me and watch what he's doing on the fret was <clears throat> incredible so in the same way i just ha knowing that i loved comedy and kind of knowing a little bit about you know what goes into it i thought oh if people can see up close tangibly visually how a comedian puts their material together they're they're just going to appreciate it even more because you're going to understand that it's craft it takes work and that the, the, they're setting a very high bar for themselves too Yes. Well, one of the things out of so many uh, about your career, Jesse, that I just find so fascinating is that you have this unspoken language, I guess you could say, with comedians where they trust you enough to come on. Because uh, sometimes I've learned, I don't know, getting comedians on my show, they can be a little bit cagey sometimes. 
Um, especially if you're not a comedian, but you're coming from an external perspective, but then getting them comfortable enough uh, to talk about their things. Because this part, as I said at the beginning, is often mysterious. They don't like that people to know that part of their process. So when you invite a comedian on your show to talk to them, is it an easy get most of the time? Or is it challenging to maybe get a comic, no matter what level they're at, to commit to coming on, knowing who you are and what the expectation will be in the conversation? Yeah, I, I totally hear you. And I definitely experienced that for a while when I was trying to pursue this because there, 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 there's so many ideas around that comedy can't be explained or talked about. And somewhere along the way, I, I you'd have to ask every comedian when they decided to trust me, but it, <laughs> okay. it definitely did happen maybe after you know the first 10 episodes of the podcast based on sort of who I had on and the conversations we had. And then what has happened now that I've been doing it so long and I'm so old is I'm been doing the podcast longer than some comedians have been doing comedy or, or give or take, right? So there's a younger generation of comedian who has never done comedy without me writing about it, which is an extremely bizarre thing to experience. And without me being, without it being normal for them to talk about it, without them aspiring to be on the show, I, I, I'm resisting so many desires to name drop very famous people who like. No, I get what you're saying. I, but yeah, like, I, I think so. That is, I don't know. Like, I, I, I feel so lucky that comedians have entrusted me with their art form. Um, and I just try to do my best not to, um, ruin that, that trust or not to treat it cheaply and try to take it as seriously as possible because I do know it is rare. Yeah, very much so. And I feel like too, the more you have on, I mean, I'm, I'm nowhere near your level, but for me, I've learned with the continuation of the people I've had, the trust gets continued to be built. Henceforth, why a pitch like this is easy for you guys to come on and talk because there's been a level of trust built between myself and your bookers or whoever, but I think that's cool. No worries about the name dropping. It's hard not to do sometimes because <laughs> yeah, right. I have well, a few right now that I could probably just let slip, but it's like, well, it's your here. show. You can do it. Yeah, no, I, no, you should. Keep, no, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. I mean, it's fine. All right, Eddie, one last question while we wrap here. This is a lot of fun. We've talked about different aspects of this one big takeaway that you want non-comedy nerds to get from this when they watch? Like, what are you hoping people take away when they watch this comedian who maybe they've never heard of talk about his process in putting a show together? Well, I guess I hope they come, I hope audiences come away with uh, an appreciation for the craft and specifically an appreciation for what Mike does, which is that he is, crafting you know comedic long form comedic storytelling out of the stuff of life um and and that is you know not 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 everybody can do that not everybody can do that and make it interesting and profound so i think hopefully you come away with a, a greater appreciation a greater appreciation overall but a specific appreciation for him awesome now just remind our listeners and viewers jesse when does this air for people to watch uh, March 26th, Peacock. Check it out. Yeah, check it out. And your podcast. I follow your article. I, I mean, you have inspired me in many ways. Okay. I don't want to gush here and infantilize, but like <laughs> I started interviewing comedians because of you and the way that you talk to them. And so when this opportunity came along, I was like, absolutely, because before it was kind of nerve wracking to reach out to comedians and they would make me uncomfortable uh, and I didn't know how to handle them, so to speak. Uh, but Joel McHale, I'll drop a name, was a master class on how to have a conversation with a comedian. And Mark Norman, too, during the yeah. pandemic. Uh, I think I made him a little uncomfortable, but it was fun. All yeah. right. No more well, name so dropping. That's very, that's very kind of you to say. I, that, that's, it, that means a lot. It, well, it, 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 yeah, it is, it is cool to hear. I, I, I'll, I'll say it also to Jesse. You know, he really does his homework. And I think that that is the thing that is uh, it just jumps out immediately. Like when you listen to his podcasts, he is really coming prepared and thoughtful. And and that's what I think the comedians then realize like, oh, 
Oh, you get me. Okay, cool. I'm, I'm, we, we can have Absolutely. this conversation. Eddie, Jesse, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. We'll see you the next time around. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank Brent. you.